All right, in this video, we're going to learn about interval notation. It says, describing sets of numbers, we can use any of the following ways to describe a set of numbers. So first of all, we could use words. So you have x is less than or equal to 3 in the first example here. And in fact, that's how we translate this expression here. We read this, x is less than or equal to 3 which is exactly what I just said in words. So we call this set notation. Now I want to go ahead and look at the number line now. Notice that if you look at all these numbers, they're all less than 3. And notice the right side there, it's a bracket. A little bit hard to see, so let me put one in there. Um, anytime we have a, a bracket like that, we say it's closed-ended. And what that means is this set of numbers is going to include 3. So the end value is included in the set. Now, this set also includes all the numbers that are less than 3. Now, when we do, or when we, when we uh, change to interval notation, we're going to want to go from left to right. So we want to make sure we know what's out on the left here. Well, this graph goes forever left. We call that negative infinity. So again, interval notation is read from left to right. And so if you're looking at our graph here, it goes from negative infinity. Now, we don't usually write it out there, but for some people that might be helpful. So notice in interval notation, we're starting at negative infinity. And then as you follow the graph to the right, it stops at 3. And so our, our set is written um, in interval notation, negative infinity to 3. Notice I used a parenthesis next to negative infinity. There is actually no smallest number. It's more of a concept. And so we actually just, we'll always use parentheses to indicate the idea that it goes forever left or gets forever smaller or forever big negative. Let's look at the next example. It says y is greater than 4. And in fact, that's how we read this in set notation. Whoops, let me fix that. y is greater than 4. So if you look at my graph down below, those are the, that's a picture of the numbers that are greater than 4. Now notice this time I have a parenthesis at 4 instead of a bracket. And we call this open-ended. So in this set of numbers, we're actually not going to include our endpoint, the number 4. So now if we go from left to right, uh, it's going to, whoops, let me go backwards here. From, on the left, we start at 4, but we don't include 4, so that's what we're saying here. And then it goes forever right, and again, that's the idea of infinity. And so, in interval notation, we're, we write it 4 to infinity. Notice you have parentheses on both sides. Again, um, 4 is not included in my set, and infinity is just a concept. We'll always have parentheses next to infinity. All right, let's look at the last example here. x is a number between negative 2 and 3. Now, if you look at my graph down below, all those numbers Everything that's shaded are the numbers that are between negative 2 and 3. Notice I'm not including negative 2 and 3. That's because there's no equal sign on these. And so we're not including our endpoints. Now, when you read this expression, the way we actually would say it is x is greater than negative 2 and less than 3. At least that's the other way we read this, usually the way that we read this expression. So you can actually break this into two parts. Notice if you look to the left, you can see that it says negative 2 is less than x, but if you read that backwards, we would actually read it as x is greater than negative 2. And if you look down here, aren't all our numbers greater than negative 2? Okay, and then we could look at the other half of the inequality and it says x is less than 3. And again, if you look at all our numbers in here, they're all less than 3. So all of these numbers are greater than negative 2, and they're also less than 3. 
And so that's why we say x is greater than negative 2 and less than 3. Another way to say that is all our numbers are between negative 2 and 3. All right, so let's go down and do some examples. Now, if you want to, you can try to do these and then watch the video. Um, or you can just watch the video the whole time. So let's go ahead and do the first one here. So we read that x is less than 1. And in set notation, that's how we write it. x is less than 1. You want to make sure you know how to read this inequality symbol. That's less than. All right, so let's go ahead and draw the graph. So we want to put 1 on there. And less than 1, the numbers less than 1 are going to be to the left of 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put a parenthesis since we're not including 1 in our set. Remember, there's no equal here. And so we don't include the endpoint. And so all the numbers less than 1, the graph's going to look like that. And now if you want to go from left to right to write this in interval notation, notice on the left we have negative infinity. Again, if it helps, you can write it in, although we don't usually put it in there when we do the graph. But now to write it in set notate or uh, interval notation, we're going to go from left to right. We have negative infinity on the left. And then notice it goes to 1. And actually, I need to fix this because, oh, let's see, I put the wrong thing in there. So that should be a parenthesis because 1 is not in my set. All right, let's move on to the next problem. It says x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than 2. So this is that between case. So basically, we want to <coughs> excuse me, graph the numbers that are between negative 1 and 2. Um, and actually, I could write this backwards. x is greater or equal to negative 1. And then I can connect that to x is less than 2. So that's actually how we would write that in interval notation. So notice, if you just look at this piece here, reading it backwards, it says x is greater or equal to negative 1. And if you read this piece here, it's saying x is less than 2. So x is both. So again, another way to say that is these are the numbers between negative 1 and 2. Notice our set will include the negative 1 because of the equal symbol there. But our set won't include the 2 because of the fact that there's no equal symbol on the other inequality. So let's go ahead and graph this. Let's put in our numbers. Notice on the left we're including negative 1. And on the right we will not include the 2. And then everything in between. So in interval notation, it looks very similar. We're starting at negative 1, and we're going to 2, and the brackets will look the same, the bracket in the parenthesis. Let's move on to number 3. So this is the number is greater than or equal to negative 3. So that's how we write that in set notation. x is greater or equal to negative 3. That's how we represent the numbers that are greater or equal to negative 3. Let's go ahead and draw the graph. Now you could go straight to the interval notation, but I always found for most students it helps to first draw the graph. So let's do that. So we'll put in negative 3. The numbers that are greater than negative 3 are going to be to the right of negative 3. And notice I'm using a bracket since we've got the equal symbol here. And that would be the numbers that are greater or equal to negative 3. So from left to right, we start at negative 3. And then we go forever right. That's infinity. So it's going to be negative 3 to infinity when we write this in interval notation. All right, last one. Number 4, all real numbers. That's basically all the numbers that we graph on the number line, all the numbers that we work with. So the fancy way to write this in set notation looks like this. It's read x such that, or it's the set of numbers x such that x is a real number. Now for me, just writing all real numbers is good enough. The other thing we do have is a short way to write that. Some people use this capital R with two legs. And so that's one way to express the real numbers 
in set notation. Let's go ahead and graph the real numbers. That's everything. And if you're going to write that in interval notation, we go left to right. On the left, we've got negative infinity. On the right, we've got positive infinity and everything in between. And so negative infinity to infinity is how we express all real numbers using interval notation. And that's it for this video.